Storytelling is an inextricable component to design. There is no design without a story. I like to think of travel as a ritual, an intentional interruption of life's rhythms. Um, so, I mean, to start, I mean, I, I, I'd like to learn your story. Like, what brought you to where you are today as a storyteller? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, okay, so it's a windy story. I love it. Long and windy. Um, I started in the entertainment industry, like, squarely in Hollywood. Right, right after college, I moved to Hollywood. I worked at CAA. I worked for Jerry Bruckheimer. And then I went to law school and was an entertainment lawyer, representing actors, screenwriters, directors, producers. Um, I did that for a few years, and then I started working with the talent, essentially, on developing their films, finding financing. I really liked that part of it more than being a lawyer. So I start gradually segueing to independent production. Then I moved to New York. Um, and I started producing other things besides films. Um, so things for brands, things for organizations and nonprofits. Um, I was writing and producing, like, you know, uh, motion infographics and sizzle reels and all kinds of different kinds of video. Um, and on the heels of that, got a job running Slate Custom, which was Slate's internal branded content studio. This was very early days for that. So this is like 20, I don't know, get the date right, 13, 14, right around there. Um, and, um, and that led to a job founding and running Washington Post's branded content studio. Um, I did that for four and a half years and built that from, it was like a very small, like five person, wasn't really creating any original content kind of a thing, to like a 40 person, um, very full-fledged studio that I think basically still remains today at the Washington Post. They renamed it, but it's, it's, it's the same kind of, the animal that I built. Um, and um, during that time, I really went from exclusively focusing on film and video, which is where I came from, to focusing on multimedia storytelling, um, which I, I found I really loved, the challenge of thinking about a story through different mediums. Uh, so like, how can you tell one story with copy, photography, video, interactives, audio, and blend it together and literally just love that process of actually like storyboarding that out. Each part of the story, like how, which mediums are we gonna employ? and um, yeah, so that was really the heart of what I was doing at Slate and then at the Washington Post, though we were also creating films, standalone films as well. Um, and then from there, I went to Edelman for a very brief stint. It was actually pandemic year, 2020, um, to try to build a content function there. Um, and then I went to Marriott, so it was January 2021. Um, and at Marriott, I run editorial, video, and social content for Marriott Bonvoy and across all the hotel brands. So it's kind of a culmination in a lot of ways, like of everything I've done, because obviously it's very multimedia, <laughs> multidisciplinary. The reason they set the team up this way coming out of COVID was in order to be able to do 360 content marketing in one team. Um, before like social media, for example, had been in another part of the organization. Um, so, it made a lot of sense for me um, to do that because that's what I really loved was bringing the whole thing together and thinking across all these channels and mediums. When you look at your career, where did you start to form the foundations of your storytelling? Like, what were the pieces that you started to pull and went like, oh, I want to start, I want to go from this side to I want to start creating and putting stories into the world? So I really, it's, that's a good question, because I was kind of more on the business side at first, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, even yeah. working at CAA, right? It's like the agency, and, um, and then I was an entertainment lawyer. Um, but I think, like, through it all, there was a, like, always, like, a tug and pull for me, like, of, you know, kind of wanting to understand the business side and realizing the importance of that. But really, at heart, I'm a creative and a storyteller, and so... I, was, I wasn't really happy in those roles. And when I started working more with my clients, so I was an attorney, but I was like reviewing their screenplays and giving notes. 
it was just like I became friends with my clients and they were like, hey, do you want to take a look at this? I could use another eye. It kind of started there. Right. And um, and I had worked, because I'd worked at CAA and I'd worked for Jerry Bruckheimer, I'd even been like a script reader at some point. So I, I did have a background in doing that kind of work, like a light background in doing that kind of work. So I started, I started looking at my clients' screenplays, giving them notes or teleplays. Sometimes it was TV series. Um, and just loved that. Like I was like, this is what I want to do. How do I make this a career? Um, not easy, actually, to make that a career, um, especially because at that time I moved from LA to New York. Right. LA was where I had all my contacts, and you know, and it was very much studio system like that. So New York was the independent film world, and I was less versed in that. So, you know, it was it, it was part of the reason I ended up not so much an independent film in New York, but like working on all these like brand films or. Like I worked for like the like nonprofit organizations. I worked for the Ford Foundation. Like it was all these like, you know, other things that just, you know, needed somebody who could they could they could say, here's what we want to achieve with this video. And I could take it, script it, and put the whole thing together. Um, and that was really fun. And that's what led to like the rest of the the story. But it, it was, I guess, that process of like you know, realizing the story was where my heart was, and then how do I make a living at doing this? So it, the marriage of the two ultimately led me in this direction. And and then along the way, I, I discovered kind of like the more complex it was, the more I liked it. So, you know, um, that was why I really like the media multimedia storytelling. That's why I really like thinking 360 now for Marriott. Um, and, and, and I think it's why I like brand film, actually, because brand film is complex, right? Like, it's more complex to make a film that achieves brand goals and the audience wants to watch than if you could just exclusively pay attention to what the audience wants to watch. It's more challenging. And so how are you, how are you thinking about, like, like, like I, I guess let's take a step back first and go, how do you define a story? And, and how are you looking at a subject and going, this is, this is how I want to see an art exist in this? Yeah, I mean, that's a, good, that's a really good question. I think that, um, I think I, I'm, I'm just kind of fascinated with human psychology, um, like what, what makes people tick and um, stories that get at that um, are what draws me in and what I feel compelled to watch. So that's what drives my storytelling as well. Like, can we tell a story that really um, kind of peels the veil back on like what is motivating this person to go on this journey in this in this story, um, and and also that really delves into the tension. Um, this can be tricky with brand films, but um, you know, I think that like a great story needs great tension, um, and and I. And I'm motivated by that. Like, in other words, like, I'm, that's part of the human psychology thing, right? It's like, I want to understand what are the challenges that this person needs to surmount, you know, like, and, and really dive into them and really spend some time there. So um, that's been a driving force, I think, for a lot of the work I do. How have you found that evolve from, say, an organization like Washington Post that is I mean, you were doing the branded content arm of that, but it's a bit of, it's seen more as a news organization versus a Marriott that is a travel organization. And how has your storytelling evolved between that growth? But as you said, storytelling lives so much in that conflict and that tension. Hmm. I feel like it would be easier to tell those stories in a Washington Post setting versus a Marriott setting. Uh, pro yes, that, that is probably true. Though, of course, I was working for brands, yeah. right? Um, e though when you're inside of a media company and the brands are coming to the media company in order to create content in the media company's voice to appeal to the media company's audience, um, e it might give you more of a leg to stand on when you're like, we really do need to, you know, touch on the dark side here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say like, you know, I see the role of my team at Marriott to be the people who aren't making the, you know, happy clappy commercials, <laughs> right? Like we're, we're the team, it's our job, right, I think, to, um, to be like, no, we need, to, we need to actually have stories with tension, 
have stories with three X structures, have stories that, you know, where we, where we, you know, put the cat in the tree and throw the rocks, like it, and that, because that's what's going to engage the audience. And so I say it a lot, probably maybe more so at Merritt than I had to at the Washington Post, but I'm still saying the same thing. Um, and um, there might be, I might have to convince more at, at Marriott, but what I'm doing is really the same, if that makes sense. Yeah. For, from your perspective, what do you think brands should be striving for when it comes to their storytelling? Like, what's your, what's your goal with what you're creating now? So, I mean, we have our very specific brand goals, right? Um, and, and they differ. Right, so some of the content we're creating is specifically created to express the values of Marriott and align those values with our audience um, and really connect on shared values. Um, and then some of the work we're doing is more about explaining what Marriott Bonvoy is. Like people don't realize Marriott Bonvoy has 34 hotel brands under it and um, you know, how do we get that across by storytelling? Um, so it, it depends, um, or it might be changing perception of what Marriott Bonvoy is, or maybe it's just broad awareness and, you know, making sure that people know this brand exists and, and that it's a portfolio brand. Um, so, and that there's a travel program underneath of it and that kind of thing. So it really depends. Um, and I'm probably not even remembering all of our goals, but <laughs> those are some of, some of our primary goals. Yeah. How do you, you know, internally as a storyteller who's come into an organization, how do you bring your perspective into that work and use it to sort of help shape the storytelling that the organization is doing going forward? So part of it's what I said already, like making sure that we are telling stories that have heart and tension and emotion and are compelling on an emotional level um, and that we don't, you know, shy away from the tension of the story, that that is a part of the story that we're telling. Um, the other thing is really like making sure that the brand is not the hero of the story. Um, so even something like we have a series called Travel by Design, it is about hotel design, right? So it sounds like we're going to be the hero when you hear that, <laughs> when you hear that, but we took a different approach so that we weren't the hero. We actually heroed the visionaries behind the design. So the architects, the interior designers, et cetera. Um, and I think that's really important because as soon as it's us front and center and we're the hero, that's when people don't want to watch it, <laughs> frankly, yeah. right? That's when it starts to feel like a commercial. There's exceptions, Barbie, but, but, but it's hard to find those exceptions where like you can really be super front and center and have it not feel like a commercial. And um, I think that there's you know, that's another part of like what I think the role of my team is it, almost like educational within Marriott is to ensure that like within the marketing mix, we're doing storytelling that isn't Marriott front and center, right? But rather is sort of entertainment first and at the same time accomplishes Marriott's goals because that way we can engage people much more deeply and for much longer periods of time with the brand, um, which I think is you know, incredibly valuable. So if you can engage somebody for, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, 90 minutes, right? Um, imagine how much more valuable that is than 15 seconds. And um, there's definitely a place for the advertising. In fact, we use advertising to promote the content. <laughs> so I, I, I make advertising as well. Um, but I think it's really, it's, I think increasingly brands are realizing that the longer form content is accomplishing a different goal, a deeper goal, um, and moving it closer to the center of their marketing mix. And that's like something I think is really important and I'm like an advocate for at Marriott very openly. When you think of brand storytelling within the sort of marketing mix, how are you like, are you approaching it with the story first and then you figure out the 360 underneath it? Or how are you approaching that process of going, we take travel by design as an example, we have this really beautiful series that we made, we're really proud of, we're not the hero, but how do we, how do we build that out underneath it to point people to it and know that 
one, it's both a Marriott project, but two, that you're bringing in that audience that will give you that time and attention? So um, we definitely start with the concept, like for sure. Um, you have to start with the idea. Um, and so with Travel by Design, that meant that the concept was that we were gonna follow the visionaries behind the design. Um, and that was the heart of the 360, if that makes sense. And then we thought about all the different ways we could express that and how they would live and how we would reach people. So Travel by Design, it's a good example because it's very 360. So, you know, we had this concept and then we, we knew we wanted to create a film series around that concept. And then we decided we also wanted to create a podcast around that concept. And then we um, pulled in and created new articles around hotel design. Um, and we also um, created interactives to help people delve even more into hotel design. So we have like a Design 101 interactive, for example. Um, and we created a hub for all of this to live on. And then we thought about where else could it live besides this hub and our own channels. Um, and it depends on what piece we're talking about, right? So the films, for example, live on the hub, they live on our YouTube channel, they live on Amazon Prime Video, um, and they also live in our hotel rooms. Amazing. Yeah. Um, can you take me through a couple of examples of stories, and, and we can talk particular to Marriott, that from concept to delivery, you were really excited about and that worked really well for an audience? And then do you have any examples of projects that haven't gone the way you planned and how you evolve those? Hmm. Second questions. I feel like I want to start there, but I'm not sure what the example <laughs> is. Well, okay. So I feel like I already talked about travel design. So maybe I'll yeah. talk about power of travel. Not that that didn't go the way we planned, but I have to think about that one. But power of travel um, is a different example from travel by design because that one was about this comes back to the beginning of our conversation about connecting on values yeah. um, and grew out of um, our campaign that we called Power of Travel a couple years back. Um, and um, maybe, maybe that one is a one to talk about because because not going exactly at plan because it took a really long time. Um, there was, um, that's why it was a couple years ago that was the campaign, but we just launched the right. film series a couple months ago. Um, so basically, we knew we wanted to create a series that spotlighted people who were doing something positive for the world connected to travel. Um, and we knew we wanted to get across the value of the belief of Marriott that everyone should have access to the power of travel to positively transform their life. So this very inclusive feeling, like inclusion and travel together. Um, and so that, that, that we knew on the outset, but we, we went through different partners. <laughs> I'm not going to mention them, but <laughs> we went through different partners down the line with certain partners who just, it wasn't working creatively, actually. Um, and um, I think we went through two different partners before we landed on the partner that we ended up producing the series to fruition with, Culture House. Um, we did a great job. And that's the series you can find now on Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, everywhere else I just said. Um, but I, I think why that one was so tricky, I think sometimes the value-based work is, is trickier. Um, and and I, in this case, one thing that was really tricky versus travel by design, let's say, is we had to cast it from, it could be anybody, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Whereas like travel by design, it was specifically these visionaries behind our hotels. There's a limited pool there. It sort of makes it, you know, your parameters are more structured. It makes it a lot easier to find your subjects. Um, so the casting was more difficult. Um, I think that we were still figuring out over the past couple of years exactly how we wanted to express this belief. Um, it was evolving kind of in real time at Marriott itself. Um, so not just my team, but like, um, at coming out of the pandemic, like Marriott really putting a stake in 
in the ground around this brand belief and how they wanted to say it and how they wanted to communicate it. So as that was evolving, we were developing this series. So that was a part of it. And so maybe we weren't the clearest clients up front, just to put a little onus on us. I think we discovered more and more what we wanted to accomplish as we went through it. And, um, and then I think we worked with some partners who, I don't know, they just kind of weren't getting it for, for di- each one for different reasons. Um, or we weren't like seeing eye to eye on like the tone of the creative. That was a problem with one of the partners. Um, one of them was going too dark. And, I, and like I said, I'm actually willing to go quite dark, but they were going too dark even for me. Um, and, and kind of like kind of wallowing there a bit too much. It's important for most brands probably to like, yes, go delve into the tension, but you want ultimately to end on a positive note, right? And a hopeful note. And we worked with a partner who wasn't quite getting that. So there's been um, different reasons that that one just took a while to wrangle and get to like a really good place that it's in now. Um, so, yeah. Amazing. Um, for you, what are you looking at over the next two, three, five years that from a brand storytelling perspective, you're really excited about? So I really want to delve into longer format content for Marriott. Um, it's um, something I wanted to do, like even when I was interviewing, I was like, they were like, what do you want to do here? And I was like, we need to make films, we need to make TV shows. Like there's no reason we shouldn't. Like we, we, uh, we had, like travel is such a rich space for storytelling, obviously a little cluttered, but rich. Um, and, um, you know, I just didn't see any reason why Marriott couldn't be creating films and shows that were at the same level as what everyone's choosing to watch on Netflix and Amazon and in the movie theaters and et cetera. Um, it's not the easiest thing for people who are in advertising and marketing to wrap their head around, right? Like they're like, we can't, you know, people are watching, we, we're trying to get people to watch, spend 15 seconds with us. And you're saying we're going to make something that people are going to want to spend 90 minutes with us. Like, is that really going to work, you know? And so, it, you know, it's something I've really been working on there is kind of getting us to the point where, where everyone feels comfortable with that. And it's because quite an investment of resources. Um, and so that's something I really, really want to do. And whether it ends up being a feature or a TV series, we're still figuring it out. Whether it's going to be scripted or unscripted, we're still figuring it out. So we, we don't know format at all yet. Um, I, I, I want to start with concept, right? So yeah. right now we're still in the looking for the right concept phase of that. Um, but I think we're in a place where we're like finally ready to really seriously go down that road. Um, and Merit has has actually made long form in the past. You may know, mm-hmm. um, but it's been a long time. And and uh, and I, I I think that they they did it, and then they didn't necessarily want to do it again for. <laughs> and so it's been kind of bringing them back to it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. What do those conversations look like internally? Like what what are the conversations that you're leading around why you want to see Marriott play in this space? Yeah. So it has to do a lot with what I was saying earlier around people spending time and um, emotion, not just time, but like reaching people on a deep emotional level. So you can only go so far with that in a five minute or seven minute or 10 minute, right? The, the, the more space you have to deeply explore a story, the more potential for deeply connecting with the audience. Yeah. And if we're doing it right, then that should be connection with what the brand is trying to communicate, even if it's subtle, right? And even if it's quite organic to the story and it's really entertainment first, like ultimately you should be connecting in on what the brand is trying to achieve. So that's what I'm saying to leadership, you know, like if we could get people to spend an hour with us, like imagine how impactful that would be, right? Even impactful when they go to like figure out what hotel they want to stay at or where they want to book or whatever it is, like it's, you're putting them in a frame of mind where they've got this emotional connection with your brand, right? And I don't know that there's another way to do it at that level, right? So that, those are the conversations I'm having. And I talk a lot about watch time. Um, that's my favorite term because you just can't argue with the fact that you're going to get 
way more watch time if you create something longer, <laughs> unless people don't like it, um, than with an ad spot, right? There's just, yeah. you, no one can argue. Um, and, and if you look just like aggregate watch time, right? Like we're looking at like hundreds of thousands of hours with our Amazon Prime series. Um, we're not gonna get anything like that with, with your ad spot. You put it, you blast it out to the entire world and every place you can put it. So. I, I talk a lot about time, but it's really more than that. It's it's also just this connection on a deep level. Yeah, I was gonna say, what are the, you know, I know it's the conversation I think this community has all the time, which is how do you measure stories? Like, what are you looking at as metrics? Watch time being one of them. But what are some of the other metrics that you're looking at to go like, you know, we did this, it was 30 minutes, it worked really well, now let's go a little bit longer. So watch time's nice because it's both scale and engagement. Um, does I explain what I mean by that? Like, yeah, it, yeah. okay, so because watch time is taking into account how much time number of people are spending with it. So it's both scale, how many people you're reaching, and then how much time each one is spending. So it's, n it's a nice number for that reason. But then we also look at pure scale metrics. That's very important at a gigantic Fortune 100 brand, right? Yeah. Like, we, we can't do niche, you know, like, we need to make big impact. So... You know, we need many millions of views on everything. Um, so that's really important. Um, and then um, we also look at completion rates. So, you know, that's really important just to see, like, whether people are, are like, staying with it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, that's, that's obviously a good way to tell if what you made was compelling and engrossing. Um, and, um, and then we also do brand lift studies wherever we can. Um, so as much as possible. Um, and generally we're able to because we're like, you know, each platform has its own brand lift study that comes with your buy. Um, or we, you know, um, for articles, we, we utilize Notch, which puts a, you know, question at the bottom of the article. So you can kind of do these pulse brand lift study checks kind of, kind of thing. Um, we also have done like focus groups. It's another way, um, especially with our in-room TV. Um, so my team also programs the in-room televisions um, for the you know over 8,000 properties around the globe. Um, but there's not a lot of measurement with those TVs. We can't really see what people are doing with our content there. A lot less than like let's say YouTube, where we can see everything. So um, so to get around that, we've started doing focus groups where we're we're just asking people literally, you know, like showing them content um, and seeing what they want to see in the hotel room. Um, so that's been really helpful and that's something we just started doing this year. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I think that's all my questions for you. I want to do a quick rapid fire before we wrap up. I have five questions for you. Okay. Um, the first is, what is a story that's had a big impact on your life and why? Ooh. And it could be a story you've created, but it could also be a story that you've consumed. Well, that's a really good question. It's, it's, it's hard because, like, there's so many. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I don't know. i got to think about why this is coming up for me. But I feel like, for some reason, what's coming up for me is Truman Show. Um, I love that movie. And there's, there's something about the... Um, this idea of like our lives kind of not being our own, you know, like being watched and programmed um, versus what is real and what is honest and what is authentic that really resonates with me and just kind of on a personal level. Um, and just kind of what I think like cult is a cultural struggle or societal struggle that we all have um, where it's, you know, there we're, we're, uh, essentially this idea that like we're programmed with a lot of different beliefs and um and um ways in which we think we're we're supposed to act right things we were supposed to say and it can be really hard to actually get underneath of like who you really are with all this programming and i, I felt like truman show really brought that to the surface amazing that's a great film um my second question kind of ties into that but it's what's one film you should, that you think everyone should watch yeah. Could be true. Could be true. <laughs> <laughs> but but let's pick something else so we can say more. Um, okay, one film everyone should watch. Um, hmm. 
Uh, I'm not being rapid on these, all right. Sorry. <laughs> I need to be more rapid. Okay. Um, well, I guess. Hmm. I, I don't, again, I don't know why this one's coming up, but I, but I, I immediately thought of being John Malkovich. Um, and I, I think there's like, there's, there's something in that film that I find really, that resonates with me a lot around, also around identity, kind of similar to Truman Show. Um, but it, 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 it really plays with this idea of who, who are you? Right is like they're jumping into John Malkovich's mind and becoming him, right? And then he's multiplying and like kind of losing himself, and they're kind of losing themselves. And um, again, it comes back to this. I think it's similar to Truman Show thematically that this idea of like who is your authentic self and um, are we our authentic selves on a daily basis and like, you know, that I guess just this kind of brute question of like, who am I? You know, who is Annie? Who, you know, who are you? Um, and how do you answer that question? So I, I like what it stirs up. Amazing. Um, what's something you never leave home without? Besides my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the common answer now, but. The automatic, but what's more, okay, so what's more interesting? That's not very interesting. Um, never leave home without. Um, honestly, healthy snacks. So I am the kind of person who used to eat frequently, or yeah. I get headaches, I get slug it, I just, I don't know, some people can go all day. My husband's like this, he can go all day and not eat. I have yeah. to eat every two hours. So I never leave home without dried fruit and dried and, uh, and plain, like not roasted, uncooked raw nuts, like I have right now on me. <laughs> Literally, I have walnuts and I have dried apples. <laughs> I love it. Um, what's an important place for you to go to find inspiration? Well, n broadly, nature. I am very, very affected by, like I have an extremely strong need to be in nature. Um, like, e like even right now, like I've spent this whole day like in this building and I'm like, I've got to get out there. Um, and then I would say like, this is going to sound funny, but the closest nature to where I live, other than I have a little, we have a little yard. I live in Brooklyn, so I'm not really in, you know, some nature reserve. Um, but I live around the corner from a huge cemetery called Greenwood Cemetery that is incredibly beautiful. And that's where I go. Like if I have like a half hour break or sometimes I'll even take calls from there. That sounds really funny, but it's true. <laughs> um, if I have a half hour break, I will go and wander around Greenwood Cemetery. And it's just like, it's all, all times of year beautiful. Like the, the nature there is amazing. It's rolling hills, it's lakes and ponds. There's like tons of wildlife. I've seen like incredible birds there, like like just like huge birds. Like it's very cool. Um, so I, you know, I will sit there and literally like just kind of meditate actually. Um, and sometimes in a more focused way, like literally like something that I'm trying to brainstorm around or figure out. Um, but yeah, I just find it really inspiring to, to wander in the cemetery. <laughs> I love it. Um, and lastly, uh, what do you think is the most important skill for storytellers to develop? I think empathy. Um, I think you need to be able to put yourself in the in the in both the place of your subject, right, and their story, and really feel their story as if it was you, and also in the place of your audience and what is going to emotionally move them. So sometimes when I'm developing a story, not sometimes, always, I think of one person, um, usually a real person, like my uncle, whatever, you know, like somebody who I. Who, who is in the target audience, right? Yeah. Um, 
and who really kind of represents the target, in my mind, represents the target audience. Because if I think of this one person, then I, I, can, I can put myself, right? You can't, you can't do, you can't put yourself into a million people, right? It's impossible. But one person you can. And then I can think like, okay, so what would make this person be really interested in this? What would, what would make them be emotionally invested in this? What would, what would allow them to have the takeaway that we want them to have? Um, and, um, and so it's, it's really being able to kind of it comes back to being John Malkovich. Oh my gosh, I just realized that become somebody else essentially, right? Yeah. Um, you have to kind of become another person to create storytelling that's going to move other people. Amazing. Well, that was all my questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really you. appreciate your time. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. <laughs>